Chris Walker, your security doctor, back again for another exciting session around data loss prevention incident response. And that's going to be today's topic. We're going to talk about data loss prevention, our newest addition to the SecOps family, and how we can actually start to streamline those day-to-day -day operations, handle incidents from a data loss prevention perspective, some of the different integrations that we actually can connect to today, and then we'll just do a high-level demonstration around that. Now, of course, today's conversation is brought to you by my pocket protector and of course ServiceNow. So let's go ahead and get after our agenda. First and foremost, let's go ahead and define what is data loss prevention. Next, we'll talk about the DLP challenge and how ServiceNow is planning to solve it. Last, we'll look at the integrations and then of course, a very simple demo of the data loss prevention offering here at ServiceNow. So let's talk about data loss prevention. What is it? Well, we've clearly defined it right here, but there's more to it. Data loss prevention actually classifies regulated, confidential, and business critical data, identifying if there are violations against a set of defined policies. Think HIPAA or PCI or even GDPR. And it's typically driven by those regulatory compliance efforts where we need to understand and identify how we enforce the alerts and the protective actions to prevent end users from accidentally or maliciously sharing, deleting, or moving this data from the organization and putting them at risk. And that's what happens. We see this on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of these organizations and industries have either users with malicious intentions or just simply clicking something incorrectly, which then can actually put a lot of reputations at stake, trust, transparency, and of course the reputation of your brand and your business. So what do we need to do to protect the data loss prevention and make sure that we're controlling these different endpoint activities and filtering data streams and so on and so forth. So in order for us to achieve this, we need to understand the challenges. So as we can see here, ServiceNow was presented with this challenge from a series of conversations and customers. And how can we start to go through specific use cases and also identify this data from all of these different areas of concern. Now, as you can see, we have data loss prevention admins, user needs, and manager needs that need to facilitate very specific use cases. Point blank, we actually have the ability now to see the challenges and where they exist, the bottlenecks, and a lot of the issues. So from here, we can see Data loss prevention admins, they need an enabled integration for some of the popular integrations we'll be covering today. The analyst also needs to be able to actually facilitate the hands-on keyboards, right? Assigning to the users and managers and being able to take those open incidents, close them and take them through the process. Now the end user, of course, needs to understand what they did wrong, what happened, why was this an action that was taken incorrectly, and what do I need to do to further educate and train myself. And so we've come up with a solution to facilitate all these use cases. Finally, being able to help and facilitate managerial needs, reviewing these incidents in a centralized and visible workspace, which we'll be covering in today's demonstration. So let's go ahead and get right after it, starting with the initial data loss prevention integrations that ServiceNow has built. All right, I'm excited, you're excited, data loss prevention is excited. Before we get into the demo, I wanna go ahead and just preface the integrations since that was part of the agenda. So over here are three integrations, Semantic, Proofpoint, and Netscope. Now we're gonna to continue to mature and evolve data loss prevention with more integrations, functions, and feature sets. So stay tuned, we're very excited to see this continue to grow. Now, for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna be going through three key areas. We're going to go through setting up DLP notifications and assignment for end users. We're gonna create the assignment rule for DLP incidents. And then we're also gonna set up the response due date rules and just kind of showcase what that looks like. We'll come full circle to showcase what the workspace looks like for the manager, as well as what the analyst from the data loss prevention side would see. So let's go ahead and start with the basics. We need to go ahead and actually set up our default configuration. As you can see here, I already have this configured, but in a real world scenario, this would probably be set to zero. This would not be checked off. And of course, these areas would not be filled in. So we're gonna go ahead and just go through this step by step. Now, the purpose of this task is to enable you to specify 
the frequency at which email notifications should be sent to your end users. For example, you can set a notification preference to accumulate these incidents and then send them an email digest, maybe on a once a week basis. So by assigning that incident, you can specify which group to initially assign the DLB incident to. Now we've done that, we can now identify what needs to be prioritized for our data loss prevention operations teams. So let's go ahead and select the seven, that's a good number. Let's go ahead and automatically update our parent state based on any child incidents. And then of course, let's go ahead and select our default DLP ops group. And for our end user identifier, this is actually what we use to identify the end user. So some possible values here, we're gonna go ahead and select the file owner and then just simply click save. Boom, we are done. So simple. Next, let's create the assignment rule for data loss prevention incidents. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our assignment rules from our application navigator. Here you see I've created one to assign data loss prevention incidents. Now this is pretty straightforward and very simple. The purpose of this area is to not just configure what the assignment rule is, but also to configure how it's going to be assigned based on a subset of conditions. So we can see here we are assigning a DLP incidents. I can put in my description. Here my scan source is the endpoint file system. Of course we can select other scan sources. And then my severity conditions are high and medium. Here I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to my manager and use the manager field. And of course my file owner to identify the end user. So now that I've configured that, let's go ahead and move over to the response due date rules. Now with the due date rules, it's very straightforward. This is how we're going to now escalate to a higher tier, right? In this case, my manager to set up the response due date to determine how much time do you want to give to your end users to respond to this assigned data loss prevention incident. So for example, let's say a user had credit card information in a cloud provider or on the network in some file system. What do we do about that? Well, we've identified it, we've detected it, and now we've opened up an incident and we've assigned that to the end user with an email. But they probably have a couple of days before we're actually gonna go ahead and take some brute force approach. Whether that's removing the sharing file permission settings or disabling access, or maybe some other type of internal business process based on the policy. So let's go ahead and set up that escalation. So here we have our response due date rules. Here we have one that's escalating to the manager in several days. Again, we've set this to active. Our scan source is set accordingly, right? The endpoint file system, medium low. And of course, it's going to escalate any overdue incidents to the user group, DLP ops group, and we see escalate has been selected. So now that we have that conditioned, we can go ahead and create the actual response, meaning the email that's gonna be sent out not only to our teams, but more importantly to the end user, because they need to understand the violation, the policy, and they also need to understand what file is associated to this uh, particular issue. So let's go into our DLP administration. Let's go into the templates. And now let's go ahead and categorize these incident notifications for our end users so that we can send them an email about those due dates or even coach the end users about what to do when certain conditions are met based on the email that's sent out, right? We can select a number of different variables. So let's take a look at one of the default templates for escalation. This one here is gonna to go to all recipients. We can obviously condition this template based on a number of different fields, but for the purposes of this demo, I'll just show you what escalated incidents look like from a digest perspective. So this is a weekly digest. It's saying, hi user, the following incidents have been escalated. And here we can see the overview table, right? The records or the incident records that are open. <clears throat> so in this case, maybe we wanted to add some more fields, right? Some more variables. So on the right hand side, we can do so. And we can do that. We can actually showcase a couple of different things from the target user. Maybe we wanted to go ahead and capture their location, right? Uh, maybe we want to capture the date when it when this actually was created by. Um, maybe some other information, right? Their first name, last name. So there's a lot of different areas in here that we could certainly cover in terms of being able to, again, surface the most important relevant information so that the end user knows exactly why this particular email is being sent to them, what the violation is, what the policy was. And so again, we're coaching them, we're training them, we're educating them to make better informed decisions with the data that's in their possession. So again, it's really important to understand how we do that. <clears throat> and of course, we can facilitate these different templates by leveraging these different variables within the email template. Now that we have all of that set up, again, we can set up your incident response options. 
Those incident response options will allow you to perform a series of different tasks, right? Based on the type of DLP incident, whether that's deleted content or encrypted files or reporting false positives or a wrong owner or even reviewing entitlements. Again, all this can be carried out and done within your data loss prevention administration. So we can go ahead and set up those incident response options as seen here bring this up very quickly. Here I have my default option. This is going to showcase some actions that can be taken and how we can actually respond or report these data loss prevention issues. So again, this gives you another way to condition, filter, and then of course report on those end user action mappings to then put an action behind this response, right? And so for an example, right, SharePoint implies that the scan source is SharePoint, which now means we can either enter the name of the incident response or look up using that search. The action would be that user responding to the incident and they can select that set action. So that allows us to now understand what the user's doing and then taking the appropriate actions to then of course, you know, remediate this particular potential risk. So we can go ahead and facilitate all of that there. <clears throat> now, of course, when we look at these specific actions or these business processes, of course, this is going to be everything that we can do in terms of being able to facilitate more of those internal conversations, but really facilitating better cyber hygiene, right? Better data loss prevention and prevention. So now that we have all these different configurations done from the administrative perspective, let's now go ahead and see what this would look like from the operation workspace perspective. So as the DLP admin, as the analyst, I'm able to see a lot of critical components that I wasn't able to see because all my sources were disparate and siloed across many different sources. But now that I'm sourcing everything through those tools, I'm able to see open incidents by severity and a total count. Top offenders based on those open active incidents. I'm also able to see the scan source as well as incidents by policy. Most importantly, I can see open incidents by age. And this is just telling me between 61 and 90 days, I have 139 total incident count. And then open incidents by status, right? So by those states, I can see I have 46 open, 45 in review with the percentages right next to them. So it's just a really nice way to, again, centralize this data, all this information, and then be able to prioritize my overdue critical incidents or incidents that are assigned to end users specifically that have not been resolved. So this is a great way to facilitate those key performance metrics and those indicators. On top of that, as an analyst, this would be my view. So I would go into ServiceNow's data loss prevention tool. I would then be able to see the specific DLP incident record that's been assigned to me. And then of course, open it and start to facilitate next steps to remediate and rectify this issue. Here you can see very quickly the details of said incident record. But what's really cool is the file permissions. We're pulling this information from those third-party tools such as Netscope and Proofpoint and Semantic, and we're able to pull and aggregate this information. So I can see the name, the permission sets, all this information will help me further do my analysis and investigation to deem if we have a serious issue on our hands. We can see that it's been assigned <clears throat> since I am playing the persona of a data loss prevention analyst and I'm in the DLP ops group, we can see this was assigned to me. Of course, we have our activity stream, we can add attachments, so on and so forth. And then we have some options here at the top, right? And so going back to those user actions, what are some things we can do? Well, we could report this as a false positive. Maybe this was a scenario where the user actually did something, but it was not malicious. So now we need to go ahead and just report this as false positive. They did it by accident. Maybe it's the wrong owner. So we've identified this incorrectly. Let's go ahead and facilitate that conversation. And of course, then we can go ahead and submit a response or simply compose an email saying we've received it, we've acknowledged it, and we're going ahead and changing the status um, to maybe complete in this case, if we're reporting it as a false positive with the subject body, et cetera, et cetera. So we can do these different facilitations right within the actual workspace from my DLP incidents. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. That was just a brief overview of data loss prevention, incident handling, and how we can facilitate those different DLP integrations right within security operations here at ServiceNow. As always, thank you so much and always stay safe.